welcome back to AutoCAD 3D Lectures with your instructor Elia Gindis. This is now chapter two, lesson one, and the name of the chapter is Object Manipulation. And we're gonna cover some new and very important commands here, such as Rotate 3D, Mirror 3D, do some uh, 3D arrays, polar and rectangular, and uh, round out with fillets and chamfers in 3D. Now these commands are part of what I informally call flat design, which simply means that we're creating mostly flat surfaces and not doing any curvature yet, which will come a little bit later, but that's perfectly fine for a lot of architectural uh, design, such as furniture and really a good uh, part of a architectural 3D building is mostly flat planes. So by the end of the chapter you'll be able to create uh, these flat designs of moderate complexity. Um, let's uh, get started with first of all reviewing the environment we're in. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this graphic. And just really quickly we are still in 3D modeling with the associated 3D modeling uh, ribbon. We have the same toolbars pretty much from last lesson except for one new one called uh, modeling which is right here. So I'm just go through this real quick. We have a uh, 3D navigation modeling, UCS view, and visual styles. And of course our command line at the bottom. All right, the other thing I'm gonna do real quick is change the units. And we want them from now on to always be an architectural. So go ahead and do that as well. Okay. All right, so introduction to object manipulation. It was already mentioned that extrude is perhaps the single most important command in 3D AutoCAD. Using it, you can create a wide array of objects that are flat in nature, such as building walls, doors, and some furniture, just to name a few items. However, unless you are designing a perfect box of a house, you need to rotate and mirror these objects into position, as well as array objects and add fillets or chamfers for more realistic edges. So all these tools are covered in this chapter, and we'll go through each one and do a few sample exercises. Uh, this will be a very hands-on chapter. You'll draw some realistic looking uh, designs. And these tools, together with Boolean operations, which is the next chapter, are going to be pretty much all you need to do a basic architectural design of a 3D building. So the first command is Rotate 3D. Uh, although you may not have yet tried it, you can use the regular Rotate command in 3D, but uh, the objects will just be rotated around whichever plane you're on. The rotational axis is perpendicular to the plane, and the net result is the object spinning in place. However, you may often want to rotate the object around another axis. For example, make a flat plate stand up. So recall from the first chapter that you can use the UCS command to simply rotate your active plane and draw new objects that way. We did this uh, with a couple of exercises. But for existing ones, you need to use the 3D version of this rotate command to bring them into position. So this is a very important uh, command and design tool. So let's give it a try. We're gonna go into 3D southwest isometric and draw a basic uh, 10 by 10 rectangle and there it is okay, let's zoom out take a look at it and extrude it we'll say one inch up all right then I'm gonna go into the uh, conceptual visual styles shading and notice something different here from the previous lesson my background is now black as opposed to white. Now this is to make things a little bit easier to see, to stand out, and also a little bit easier on the eyes, less light coming at you, so I highly recommend you use a black background for all your design work. Alright, so let's give it a try. Rotate 3D is a type command. There's no other equivalent, so I'm going to type in Rotate 3D, hit enter, and select the flat plate, hit enter, and uh, we want to make the plate stand up, so which axes do we rotate around? Well, if you notice, the x-axis is the one that goes through it, the shape on this side, so it's sort of like a hinge. So we're going to select the x-axis and specify a point of rotation, which is really anywhere, but we'll do the corner of this object. And then it'll be 90 degrees. As soon as I hit enter, the object will stand up, rotate around the x-axis. Okay, I'll show you this one more time. This time we're going to rotate around the z-axis, specify point, and 90 degrees again. And there it is, object rotated 
90 degrees around the z-axis. All right, one last time, we're going to lay the object down right where we found it by rotating around the y-axis. So we've done all three axes now. And there's a point of rotation, and it can be positive or negative, of course, but we'll just do positive 90 degrees. And there you are, you went through Rotate 3D in all three axes. So go ahead and pause the instructional video at this point and go through it on your own. All right, for us in the meantime though, we're gonna move on and use what we learned to create a 3D chair. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. And create a new rectangle. This time it'll be a little bit bigger. It'll be 24 by 24. Okay, there it is. We're going to extrude this out to a height of two inches. There it is. And this will be the flat bottom of a very simple chair. Now we want the back of the chair, which is going to be over here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. We can use the same shape. Now here we're going to need to make a stand up vertically. So as you guessed it, rotate 3D is what we're going to use. Select the object. And the axis we're going to need is the Y axis because we want to make the back stand up based around this edge right here. So Y axis. Specify point will be right here. And the amount of degrees, well here you just kind of have to uh, improvise. I want to lean uh, the back of the chair 30 degrees from the vertical. So we'll say uh, 60 degrees, but a negative 60. So we want to make it stand up toward us. And there it is. Okay, at this point, all you got to really do is just attach the back to the flat chair bottom. And there it is. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, change the colors of both of these to something a little more appealing than uh, white. So I'm going to type in change, select properties, color red. There it is. All right, now let's create the legs, also using rectangle, and we'll make them, let's see, two by two. There they are. There's one of them anyway. I'm going to extrude now to a height of two foot six. And there it is. Also going to uh, change the color. Let's do green. All right, and all that's left now is just simply attaching the legs to the chair. So using the move command, I'm gonna go ahead and attach that right there. Make sure you pick the right corner to the right corner. Now for the other ones, we're just gonna cheat a little bit and just copy them instead of making them all over again. So um, I would highly recommend switching to 2D wireframe at this point so you can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. So I'm gonna use the copy command to attach the legs right there and then use the copy command again to attach them to the back and there it is let's go back to shaded mode your first 3d chair as you can see this is very simple but with a few more tools and a little bit more time you can make uh, this a much more complicated looking object all right, so go ahead and try this on your own, uh, pausing the video and doing this uh, on your own from beginning to end. In the meantime, I'm going to move on to the next command, which is going to be mirror 3D. So I'm going to actually uh, only erase part of the chair and keep the flat plane because we need this to demonstrate mirror 3D. So, uh, Mirror 3D is similar in approach to Rotate 3D. Much like before, you can use the regular 2D mirror command, but this results in mirroring in the current plane only. So right now you're in an XY plane, we can only mirror around that. Uh, but what we need is the ability to mirror between any planes. As you may have guessed, the key here is selecting the correct plane, as opposed to axes, to mirror over. Just as a reminder, we have three axes, x, y, and z, and three unique planes, x, y, z, x, and y, z. 
Unlike the axes, you do not see the planes. It's something you have to envision in your mind. Think of them as a thin sheet of glass that slices through the parts. Whatever is on the other side is the mirror image. So let's give this a try. Mirror 3D can be typed or you can use cascading menus. It's under modify 3D operations. And there is 3D mirror right there. You can also use the ribbon tab under modify and there's 3D mirror right there. We'll go ahead and do that. So what you want to do is first select the object, hit enter, and then select the plane. So let's say we want to, in this case, put the mirror object right here where I'm showing my crosshairs. What is the plane that you have to mirror over? Well, if you notice that the x-axis interrupted, intersected rather with the z-axis, we'll create this plane that we're interested in, this darker one right here. So the x and the z together make the zx plane, which is right here. So I'm going, going to type that in, zx. Then specify the point. It's important that you pick the endpoint here. And do we want to delete source objects? No, we don't. And there it is, our mirror. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this new object so just easier to see. There it is. Let's try this again around the other two planes. So I'm going to uh, select again here, both objects. And we want to this time put them right here where my mouse is next to the, these two. So hit enter again and which plane are we interested in? Well it's this one right here and that is the intersection of the y-axis and the z-axis. So we have a yz plane. Hit enter. Specify point and there it is. Go ahead and change these colors tell everything apart and there they are all right one last time to conclude the lesson we're gonna mirror 3d again select all four objects and this time the last plane that we haven't worked with yet is the X Y plane and we want to put these four sort of like a sandwich right underneath where my mouse is so I'm gonna hit enter select the X Y plane specify point and hit enter. And there they are. I won't change the color this time because they're mostly hidden. But that is how you do mirror 3D. Alright. So this will conclude this lesson. Uh, in the next lesson, the second one, we're going to go ahead and start it off with drawing a 3D bookshelf to get you uh, to practice everything you've done here. And then uh, we're going to move on to 3D arrays and both polar and rectangular and then uh, finish up with some fillets and chamfers in 3D. Alright, so see you uh, in the next lesson. Thanks, bye.